What's up? What's up? Welcome into the Orange Zone podcast. I'm Tommy Sladak. We have Ashley Winskowski. We have Samantha Croston and we have Rachel Culver on the producer mic. On today's episode, we are getting into a special. It's that end of the year moment where we are going to rank what we believe are the top 10 moments from the Syracuse Athletics calendar academic year. Well, yeah. Is that the right way to say it? 2023, yeah. 2024. Yeah. 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 Perfect. So we'll get into that. We'll t- make a low mention of Q's rowing, which just finished 11th at the NCAAs. Syracuse track and field still kicking it. But really, this does feel like the end of the year, especially with school being over. But first, we need we need to address what you can see if you are watching on YouTube. Make sure you are liking and subscribing, by the way, as we chase 1,000. If you're listening, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever. We're coming out every week. So we have a gift from our, our team at Corporate, and we just won our second, so back-to-back, Edward R. Moore Award for Best Podcast Regional. So really exciting stuff. So this is from our guys, Rich and Pete. And... Let's open it up. Let's find out what it says. It says, congratulations on another Murrow Award. Enjoy this small gift to brush up on your celebrations, parentheses, safely. So I feel like it's only fair to let the person with the bum wrist open this puppy up. I feel like that's what the safely has to pertain to. I feel like that's why they wrote that on the note. So let's see about it. I hope they enjoyed our story, by the way. We got such good feedback on our storytelling of the whole wrist situation. All right, let's see. It was well documented. It really There's was. There's witnesses. By the way, try to get the security footage, and so far they said no. Yeah. Ooh. So we'll see about it. I'm going I'm to I'm need help, All right, let me unfortunately. Hold it. Let me hold it for you. Okay. What have right. you done with this bag? We've got Do a you want me to open, here. Yeah. Was this your doing, Rachel? I just did a little... Loop did you low. wrap it? <gasps> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> there are many. <laughs> no. That's so good. Wait, oh, that is incredible. Me? That is really funny. Right, there's so two. Need, wait, there, there's more. Let's bring them out. Do oh, little mini bags. My God. That is iconic. That's incredible. We can put it like back here as like a. So we need. Oh, this is so good. Shut up. So a little background. I think we need to do a a one hit hit the folks that didn't see last week's episode a one one minute recap of what happened to your arm. <laughs> okay, so the reason why all of this is again coming about just to recap is because. In short, so it was a cornhole time. celebration yeah. gone wrong. <laughs> Rachel and I were out, we're playing cornhole, and we won against Tommy and Connor, one of our news reporters. Upon winning, we run together. I jump in for a chest bump. She jumps into my arms. We both fall that way, onto the ground. And because of onto that- Onto me, onto on, me. Onto Rachel. <laughs> so ever since then, my wrist is useless. I mean, she just sits here in this splint doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, But now we have a good story out of it and a good gift. Yeah, that's awesome. Plus we won the game. So to wrap it up, I will be celebrating more safely from now on. But um, I really enjoy cornhole and I really, really enjoy this gift. And this is really like quality stuff. Like it really is just cornhole in a miniature version. So if you are watching, if you're listening, I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. It's really a... I would say a three by eight, or three or four by eight cornhole board with the truly mini bags. So I'll hold it up, Rachel, if you want people to see that. Mm-hmm. And this is quality wood. It is mm. quality bags. This is really, really funny and, and very me, smart. If we want to go wide here, okay. see, look at that. I'm already <laughs> sorry. See, that would have been a that would have been. I wonder I if they like make this for kids. Like, do you think you can like buy this for like your toddler? No, to I, think this, for, I think like, it's meant I for think this is for adults. <laughs> yeah. So here, here, take a few shots, Ash. So Rich and Pete, Ooh, thank you guys so much. Really for real. This is right. You know what I mean? It has that <laughs> real like feel. Practice. You give it a little bit of the Rick Fliss. All right, you need to make one before we keep going. <laughs> I don't. We, we could we could be here for some time. I don't like this. It's too small. <laughs> also, okay, wait. It doesn't stay on the thing like real. There, there we go. go. Okay. We Amazing. need Rachel to get a four bagger with this version. Yeah, exactly. Thank you guys so much. That is such a kind gift. So awesome. I really needed a boost today because I'm I'm starting to get really a little bit irritated with this whole situation. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm ready to rock with with the two wrists again. So thank you guys. That was that was a mood brightener. I mean, it's a part of the set now. Like it is going to be yeah. 100% yeah. Of the shots because it's a part of the story. Right you know it what I mean? It is. It's all for it's all for the narrative. It's a part I mean, of the that's lore. why we did it. Yeah. When we were jumping together, we knew this yeah. is going to be a good story. I love it. 
Let's do Thank it. Thank you, guys. Well, let's get into it. So what we're going to be doing, and if you were a listener or watcher last year, we did something similar when Brendan Hodges didn't leave us for Baltimore. We do miss <laughs> you, Brendan. But we went through, we did a blind top 10 moments from the Syracuse Athletics season. And this version, we know what we're getting into, but we don't know how each other answered it. So let's go through a list. And Ashley, if you want to do it, of the 10 in which we all grab the order. And this isn't the order which we're doing it, but these are the 10 just so you can follow along at home and maybe rank it yourself. Okay, so in no particular order, these are what we came up with prior to this, the top 10 biggest, like either positive or not just biggest moments in Syracuse athletics uh, this calendar year. So we have Benny Williams getting dismissed from the Benz basketball team. Deja Fair becoming Syracuse's all-time leading scorer and third all-time in NCAA Division I women's scoring. Fran Brown coaching search and hiring. Dino Babers firing. Women's March Madness, women's basketball, um, the women's team winning a game and then almost beating UConn in the NCAA tournament. The new era of the transfer portal that created a December that none of us saw coming with Kyle McCord and a bunch of other high-profile um, transfers and recruits for Syracuse football. Syracuse rowing, winning the ACC championship for the first time ever in program history. Bang. Syracuse women's lacrosse losing to Boston College in the final four of the NCAA tournament again. Men's lacrosse making it to the NCAA tournament for the first time in the Gary Gate era. And then the first year under Adrian Autry for men's basketball and winning 20 games for the first year of the Autry era. Okay. All right. So we ready to get into it? I think Let's so. Let's start Dive with in. number 10. Sam, kick us off. What is number 10 of these moments? For number 10, I put uh, Syracuse women's lacrosse loses to BC in the final four. Why? Because it's tired. It's a storyline we've heard so many times before. I'm not saying that I don't consider it to be notable because, of course, I do. And it was certainly a heartbreaker. But to me, I just felt like, of course, in a, in a sense, I guess I took this list or the way I interpret it was it was something that made me feel bummed out. So I put it towards the bottom. Sure. But more so than that, it's just something that's happened so frequently um, that, that it just felt, felt tired. It felt like a womp, womp, womp to me. So I put it at 10. Oh, like a womp womp. Okay. <laughs> Ash, how about you? I actually have the same one. Uh, Tales old as time. They lose to Boston College again. Yeah. I agree with you. Just not a good feeling, right? It's tired. It's a tired storyline. Like, it's not a newsworthy headline anymore because it's happened so many times. Her and I are going to end up having the exact same yeah, list. I know we are. We I'm not kidding. This has been happening to us a lot lately. <laughs> Let's find out. Rachel. Okay. I do <clears throat> not have that. For my number 10, I have Dino Babers firing. Okay. And Why is that? I have it as that. Hang on, let me get me on camera here. Not that anybody needs to see all this, but um, I have that at number ten just because I felt like it was like kind of a. It wasn't a shocking move, you know. Like it wasn't anything like special in my opinion. Like it needed to happen. It was overdue, and we did it. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think it should be anywhere higher on my list. That was my take on that. Okay, I actually like that. Maybe I made a mistake. I, <laughs> I like the way that sounded. Yeah. So my ten was. Um, <sighs> Gosh. Now, yeah, I, now, I knew he's going to be really nervous in my now. Head, yeah, but like my my that. 10 ended up being Syracuse rowing. Um I mean, I to me I think winning the ACC is awesome. I think it was an even bigger deal that they took down the Goliath of ACC rowing, which is Virginia and who had won like an absurd amount of times in a row. So to me, I think this is and I I just got the energy from the coach and the players that yeah, this was a big deal. We loved it, but they have higher expectations for themselves. So they end up finishing 11th at NCAAs. I think they're happy with that but you just get the feeling that they know and say we can do more we can do better and we're going to be going even higher so to me they make the list but i think there's there's room for improvement that even they'll tell you we're going to keep going so number nine i put that as nine ultimately for you oh no <laughs> so did i ultimately for the for this yeah for the same reason i but i i did think you know it was an accomplishment it was a feat as opposed to the way that we wrote out this list, where it was sort of Syracuse women's across, you could have interpreted it either way. Making it to the Final Four, a big deal for that team, but then losing to BC, something that we've seen happen before. To me, I interpreted the rowing as more positive. That's why I put it one spot up. Okay. Um, I agree. The same thing. Uh, I think, you know, they've never won the ACC before, so that's a huge achievement. Congratulations to the women's rowing team. But, yeah, Tommy, like you said, I think that obviously they have higher um, higher expectations and goals for the NCAA championships, finishing 11th. So hopefully, you know, they have a great coach and, and a great uh, mantra and feel over there. So hopefully they can get that done in the coming years. Rach. Um, so I 
also have rowing at nine. So there we go. I agree Enough with everything said. that was already said, and we don't need to waste time on that. All right. I went women's lacrosse loses the BC in the final four. I understand the storyline is tired, but what is making it a tired storyline is that it keeps on happening. So to me, that ends up reversing, and it becomes a storyline again. But it sits at nine because it's frustrating, and I couldn't help but I think make some of this stuff positive a little bit higher. But end of the day, it's something that continues. It stinks. I really wanted to end, and I thought it was going to happen the other week. So let's go to number eight. You have to go first because – Okay. I'll break the news to everyone. Um, my number eight is Benny Williams being Come dismissed. On. <laughs> no way. Benny Williams being dismissed from the Syracuse men's basketball team. Um, I have it so low just because it was a big moment at the time, right? What month was that? January? February? January. January. Feels right. Um, you know, huge news at the time. I think everybody was shocked, but at the same time, not shocked. Benny had been going through a lot with the team, the suspension earlier in the year. Um, and then the whole scene after, I believe it was the Wake Forest game on the sidelines. So uh, it wasn't the most shock at the time. I was surprised, but not really at all. Uh, we wish Benny the best, obviously, but yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as high as some of the other things that happened this year. Yeah. I mean, the key phrasing there is at the time. It was, it was the biggest news of the yeah. day. It was the biggest news of the week. But then what? I mean, you saw the lingering effects a little bit. You saw the way that it impacted the culture to a certain degree. But it's not the kind of thing where you're seeing the impact lingering for weeks and months the way that some of the other items on this list, you continue to see the way that the news was impacted by the things that we wrote down. Rach. Um, we're at eight, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, at eight, I have Syracuse Women's Lacrosse versus the BC in the Final Four. Um, for a lot of the same reasons, like it's it's a it's a tired narrative. Um, we're sick of seeing this happen seven times in a row. Is crazy. Like we're annoyed. We want to see better from this team, and we want to see them get over that hump. But that also doesn't take away from everything that they've done this year. They had a really successful year, so I don't want to put them as lower nine or ten. But eight felt to be about right in my opinion. Okay, and I did Benny Williams dismissed. I think it was a big deal. I think it was there was a lingering side effect of, oh, man, could they use a rebounder or whatnot, but it wasn't working. And I think it was also Adrian Autry setting the tone for what his culture is going to be and certain things that he's not going to stand for to the point where it's like, I'm not even waiting to the end of the year. This is done. We're cutting it. It's, it's going loose. So let's go down to seven, Sam. I feel like people are going to think that Ashley and I, I feel like we should say it at the same time. Okay. So that people don't think we did it together. Okay, we didn't do it together. I mean, every okay. number you've said, I can't believe this keeps happening. I know. So, All right. right, let's, ready? ready? I'll, I'll count it down. Okay. Three, two, one. First year under Rock Trade. I'm How starting did to think. you know it was going to be again? I just know. Maybe there's okay. too much time being spent. But that's what two. I'm saying. I know. With the I think we spent too much time together, actually. All right. Um, you, go for, you, you can go first. Okay. I'll just um, get <laughs> Seven, first year under Adrian Autry. Um, a good year, not a great year. A good year for a coach in his first season, right? 20 wins. They hadn't hit that mark in a bunch of years under Jim Beheim. Um, I think the program is on the rise as a whole. I would, I think the stock is rising, not falling. But at the same time, I think, you know, they, they did kind of fall short a little bit again in terms of Syracuse fans' expectations. I don't know if that's necessarily fair because it is Autry's first year as a head coach and he did win 20 games. But I think not making the NCAA tournament and some of those disappointing ACC losses and, you know, declining the invite to the NIT or just not choosing to play in, in that tournament uh, left – somewhat of a bad taste in fans mouth so yeah good year not great I mean yeah just to bounce off that I almost feel like it was one of those things when you say is it is it fair you know the criticisms and this and that it was a first year to me that just felt like a first year yeah like almost like the first day at the job like you never come home from the first day and you say that was a great day like it was just the first day there were some good things about it there were some bad things about it absolutely the stock is trending upward there's room to grow um but it didn't it didn't blow me away, and it didn't blow me away with disappointment either. Yeah. Okay. Rachel. <clears throat> okay. For this one, I have Women's March Madness and winning a game and almost beating UConn. Wow. Um, I have it, like, low, not in the sense that I consider it to be insignificant. That's not that what I want to display here. I just have it low because – I feel like personally my bias is going to come out a little bit here. I invested so much energy and hope and just happiness into this team for getting even as far as they did. So like that feeling of defeat when the end finally did come hit me hard. So like I don't always love reflecting on the way that it ended. So that's why I have it ranked at sec seventh. Honestly, okay. that's kind of valid. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, seven, I went men's lacrosse. Makes it to the tournament for the first time under Gary Gate. I think 
I, I list this as seven because, again, it, it made our top ten for a reason because it was a big deal, and it's things are getting back on track. And one of the biggest questions towards the end of the season was, is SU men's lacrosse back? And to me, not quite because there's such a high standard, maybe the highest of standards in the NCAA for this program. And I think they will get there, but to me, they, they came in ranked high. They went the distance. They made the tournament. They won a game. It was right around where I expected, but it's trending in the right direction. So that's a good expectation. Number six. Do we? Uh, let's do it again. Let's okay, just I see if there's I, just, I feel the like sport. This, this is, is going to be the time where we could differ. Yeah. Just say the sport. Okay. Three, two, one. Football. Men's across. Okay. Okay. This is where we Love break that. it at six. Finally, <laughs> the seal gets broken. All right, you go first. Um, this is where I said men's across makes it to the tournament for the first time under Gary Gate. Um. Uh, to me, this was somewhere in the middle. Like you said, there were certain standards that, of course, Syracuse lacrosse has always, or for a while at least, has has lived up to. But that being said, people hadn't felt that feeling in a while for this team. And that, to me, made it feel like a bigger moment. I definitely still think they have room to grow, but compared to the places they had been just in the past few years alone – and the jumps and the progression that they made in their record, in the entire team, in the way they played, that felt, it felt like six to me. It felt like okay. six. Felt like six. Um, mine is Dino Babers firing. I think at the time, it was such a big deal, like we're saying, but it was one of those things that we moved on from pretty quickly due to the coaching search, obviously the eventual hiring of Fran Brown. Um, that day and that week was, I always like still say to people, I've only worked here for nine, 10 months, but that was the craziest day that I've had working here. It was literal insanity. Like we sat at this table and didn't move for like, I don't know, five, like four or five hours, like with all the shows. So it was, it was insane, but I think we moved on from it pretty quickly and so did the community because then it's, we're turning a new leaf. Um, I put it at six also because I don't think it's low enough to, he did spend eight years here and was the head football coach for almost eight entire seasons. So um, definitely someone that meant a lot to this community, but I also feel like this community flipped the page pretty quickly. Rachel. Um, for this one, for six, I have men lacrosse makes it to the tournament for the first time under Gary Gate. Um, I think, I mean, just being one step away from the final four, if, if they had made that one, one more win, I think this would be at a different point on my list. I do, but I think just not getting to that threshold, which I think in many ways was probably the team itself's goal going into this season. Um, knowing that they kind of had the pieces to be super successful, um, I think it was a great year in terms of being like, okay, I think Syracuse lacrosse is on its way back. It's not fully back yet, but um, you'll see a lot of pieces of that same team returning next year, which I think is huge. But for now, we'll keep that at six. Okay. Six for me was first year under Adrian Autry. I think hitting 20 wins as a first year co head coach, no matter if you're a part of the program or if you're brand new, is a big success. And so I have it at six. Number five. Um, five, I did women's March Madness and winning a game and almost beating UConn. Um, I, I mean, I knew for a fact that most of the women's basketball things I felt that we had on this list needed to be in, in the top five. Maybe that's my bias too. Like what Rachel said about feeling disappointed. I felt, I felt excited. I felt so invested and I felt like when you look at not even just the record, but just the culture of this team, even in the time that you've been here covering it, all of the different changes that they've gone through from Hillsman and some of the drama that surrounded that team to truly being, at times, one of the brightest spots in Syracuse, the games that people really looked forward to. I mean, I had my mom and dad on Long Island watching you know, Syracuse women's basketball because I feel like they just really had everybody so invested um, so to me, there was a community piece there. I feel like Syracuse loves Syracuse athletics and families and daughters and whoever else was coming out to support this team in a way that they really haven't in a long time. Maybe ever, honestly. Yeah. Um, I have the same one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, you know, like Rachel said, it did – it did. It was unfortunate, I guess, to not see that team go further just because we were all so invested in them. But like you said, I had, you know, my parents were invested in women's basketball. I think it was just great to see the turnout in the Dome. And that was one of the real positives for me this winter, just going to all those games, especially on Sundays. Um, 
you know, and seeing their, they had a flair for the dramatic. So seeing those fourth quarter comeback wins was so fun. And seeing how into it the crowd was in the dome on a uh, Sunday in January was, was just great um, and a great spark this winter. So definitely had to be top five. Okay. Let's, st let's stick in order. You, Rach. Oh, yeah. I was like, well, who comes next? Um, for five, I had Benny dismissed. Um, I know you guys had this a lot lower, which I respect, and I can see the points that you all made in that. For me, I feel like this, yes, maybe we turned the page on it quickly, but it was also something that built all season. Um, this was something from the start. Benny Williams wasn't in the first on the bench for the first few games. He wasn't around for the first couple of games. There was always questions surrounding Benny Williams. And then when we got to the point of, okay, he's no longer going to be part of the team, we were picking through video and we were like, oh, we saw him store him off the court in this game at this time. Um, I think it speaks volumes about how Adrian Autry is going to run this program. And I think that will stay relevant for years and years to come. So I think, yes, with it being just one move, I understand why it wouldn't necessarily be up high on a lot of lists, but I think – we will be able to call back to this move for years to come and be like, no, we learned a lot about Adrian Autry and the way he's going to run this team, and that's why I have it at five. All right. My five was Dino Babers firing. Eight years is a long time to be here, but ultimately it was SU Athletics and the school saying we want a completely different culture. Something needs to change. We're flipping the scripts, and we're going to go full in on football. So number four. Um, <clears throat> you go. No, you go. <laughs> Deja Fair? No. Okay. I put um, Deja Fair all-time leading scorer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you go. Um, honestly, I, I feel confident about every single pick I had on this list except for my next two. And, I, and I'm, I'm just going to just give it away because I, I think I would have switched them. We we're in sort of a rush doing this. I put, I put Dino Babers firing at three. And I don't regret that because I'll explain why when we get to it. But come to think of it, I think that fair could have been a four or a three. Um, either way, I, I knew this is coming in at one of the front runners because, again, it's just the entire – and I'm sure you guys will all echo this when it gets to the point on your list. Um, to me, she feels like the kind of player who 20 years down the line, you're seeing a mural of her somewhere in the city. It's a community feel. It's what she was able to give to the team. It was the way that people felt about her. Um, just a complete and total energizer. And, and again, just to see what she did her entire career, I felt like we were witnessing greatness in front of our very eyes, and you don't get to see that every day. Um, so for four, we're still on four, yep. right? Yep. Okay. I have uh, the new era of the transfer portal uh, and that December that no one saw coming, which I know is going to be controversial, but just, I can't just wait. I can't believe Kyle McCord, obviously, in December. You know, Fadil Diggs, a bunch of, a bunch of those transfers um, coming over uh, to, to play Syracuse football. I have it at four because I think we don't know the result of it yet, right? It's a bunch of hype and it's a bunch of great potential and it's so exciting and I'm so glad that it happened and it was such an exciting December to be here and to be covering them but at the same time it's it's only promise right now like we don't know what the result of that is going to be on the field so I didn't want it to crack the top three because I think everything that I have in my top three is things that have happened and that that did you know transpire so we'll see you feel secured yeah. Rachel um, at four, I have first year under Autry. I think it is really, really hard to come into a program, make it your own after someone like Jim Beheim held that for 27 years. Um, I think it is incredibly hard to do that, A, to begin with. I think it's even harder to do that and get 20 wins out of it. I know that the culture of Syracuse basketball leads us all to want tournament appearances it leads us it leads us to want not only tournament appearances but runs in tournaments um, I don't think that happens overnight and I think what Autry did was really significant and you consider the history that this program has held for so many years I think it was a really good step in getting us into the next chapter of what Syracuse basketball will be there we go and I went new era of the transfer portal. I think it was just from a from a coverage standpoint that December was it was insane. It was it was one of those where normally end of the football season you have a few basketball games, but it's that breather before the bowl game never happened. Busiest three four weeks, I mean of the of the year. It was crazy. Every day had something. So number three, Sammy. Um, number three, I put Dino Babers firing, and the reason that I did that is because. I agree that it wasn't 
shocking to find out that he was getting fired, but that that decision, I mean, A, you talked about, you know, like sometimes it's easy to see how notable a day was by what we actually did during the day. I mean, we're never doing Orange Zone hits all throughout the show. Like it was really, it was a big deal. Um, but But that decision really set into motion five, six months plus of some of the craziest things that I've witnessed since I've been here. And it all started with them making the correct decision to fire Dino Babers. Everything that followed after that was was when you're starting to hear those conversations of fans talking about, I haven't seen Syracuse football or I haven't been this excited about Syracuse football in my entire life. And to me, the start of that, the catalyst, firing Dino Babers. I like it. Um, my number three is men's lacrosse making it to the NCAA. I think I had the highest. Did everybody mm-hmm. say that already? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I think it is such a significant accomplishment. I know it's not the Syracuse lacrosse legacy. I know it's not the standard of the program. However, they hadn't been there in three, four years. Gary Gate hadn't been there to, to take, to take them there. Um, so I think it's a marked improvement for this program and, and kind of like Rachel was saying with men's basketball, you know, those program turnarounds don't happen overnight. So to see them find finally crack the tournament and to, to finally, you know, f- find some regular season success as well, I think, um, was great. And, and they're only going to go up from here. Rachel. Um, at number three, I had the new era of the transfer portal created by an era that no one saw coming. Um, yeah, no one saw this coming. I thought I saw some stat. Maybe one of you, t- one of you can help me with this. But um, it was a crazy time for coverage. And I think the stat was something along the lines of Fran Brown was bringing in a recruit like every 60 something hours right like that's insanity that's crazy that's something Syracuse has never seen before that's something a lot of schools have never seen before and this is all kind of coming to be in the like past couple of years but it's kind of the first taste Syracuse has got of that excitement that so many schools have been tasting for a while now (coughs) so like for that to be the reality and like for us to like fully be in that conversation um, I think is super relevant, deserves to be in the top three spot, and it's not going anywhere, which also s- further solidifies it as a number three, in my opinion. I remember, by the way, just one thing on that, and I think a lot of Syracuse fans will agree, that midnight on New Year's Eve when Deuce Chestnut said he was coming back, when it is midnight on New Year's Eve and I'm sitting yep. here, and it's, I was like, <laughs> is this a joke? Like, are we ever <laughs> going to get a break? But that, like like you're saying, Rachel, like is a testament to how insane that couple weeks yep. was. Like, it was every day, every holiday. I think we got a break on Christmas, but... <laughs> I remember yeah, like, like actively, I want to go home. <laughs> I was like actively sipping champagne out of a bottle when that yeah. happened. Right. And like kind of took this double take. I'm like, oh man, now I got a tweet. Yeah, yeah. But it was now I got a yeah. tweet. It was please. crazy. It was wild. It's always the tweets with Tommy. Man, always well, the Tommy freaking tweeter. tweets. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> Tommy tweets. It's posting now. I get it. Posting now. No more tweets, guys. That's over. That era is done. Huh. Never. No, it'll be. It'll, it'll always be Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, number three, women's March Madness and winning a game and almost beating UConn. I think I had that the highest. Yes. Um, so this is a second year coach that took her team to March Madness and almost knocked off an absolute dog on the NCAA women's side. It is a a big step, and we're just seeing an upward climb for Felicia Leggett Jack. That to me, she said it in her opening press conference. She's like, "I'm going to bring a championship here." And I believe it. I think that day's coming. So that's my number three. How about number two? My number two is the new era of the transfer portal. And I don't know why, but I'm honestly shocked that no one else has it that high. I thought for sure that that was going to be in most people's one or two spot. Because here's the thing. I, I really actually, I very much so enjoyed the point that you brought up about the potential. Because I guess you're right to a certain, you're, you're right. Like we haven't seen all of the impacts that, um, that we will see. But for me, I think that actually is also why I put it at number two is because of the potential. There's two different things operating at the same time here. Number one is all of the things that you've already seen as a result of that. Like Kyle McCord is included in this bullet point. All of the big names that he brought in, that Fran Brown brought in are included in this bullet point. To me, that's massive. And it's not just the fact that there was this transfer portal era. It's what Fran Brown specifically was able to do with that. That was gaining Syracuse national attention. That lasted months. It's still going. It'll last years probably. It showed how good of a recruiter he was. And he already has the entire city behind him. And that is in huge part because of what he was able to do in those few months. 
But then on top of that, that's just what's already happened. Now what about what's going to happen, what you're going to see on the field because of the people who he was able to bring in, because of the recruiting efforts that he had? Um, I've never seen anything like that here. I've never seen that kind of excitement generated in Syracuse in my entire time being here. Um, so for those reasons and more, that was my number two. Okay. Uh, my number two is Deja Fair becoming the all-time leading scorer for Syracuse women's basketball and, and just Syracuse basketball. Um, a huge accomplishment for Deja. We've said it so many times, but her size, where she came from, her whole story, just um, what what an achievement. And then, of course, you know, she also finished uh, top three all-time in NCAA women's basketball scoring ever. That is something that no one will be able to take away from her. No one will be able to take that away from Syracuse women's basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think just to see her do it under Felicia Leggett-Jack, like we're saying, it is so insane that it was FLJ's just her second year as head coach. To me, it feels like it's been so much longer but just to see those two all year long and their pairing and 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 their bond um you know coming over from buffalo i just think deasia really was the most notable player that syracuse women's basketball has had ever and we got to see it firsthand and we got to sit there on the sidelines for it so uh we're sad to see her go i'm gonna miss her rachel oh my god this was such a good year for I, like <laughs> like we're all talking about this and like this was such a fun year i know you know sorry rachel go no it's okay um I also have DH Affair at number two, and I second everything that Ashley just said. The one thing that I would kind of add on to put, like, an emphasis on to why I have it at two is I don't think, like, outside of Fran Brown, there's a bigger name, you know, that kind of, like, dominated so much attention or deserved to dominate so much attention as DH Affair out of Syracuse this year. Um, I think it's it's a beautiful thing to kind of see her do so well um, in her final year after having done so well in previous years, but also kind of along with the rise of women's ba college women's basketball as a whole. Like you saw such an uptick in people who are caring, keeping up and understanding the women's basketball game as a whole and just kind of see like Deasha and that happen together, I think is special. So that's where I have it there. I mean, preach, you guys nailed it. I Deasha at number two. Where'd you have her at? I had her at four, okay. but I admitted that I would have probably switched it to mm. three and put the Babers below it. I'm right. admitting. I'm so we're all going to have the same number one? Is that yeah. what we're going to I think so. <laughs> you know what? We're going to say, that we're way. say it all at once. We're going to say it in the line on here. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Fran, Fran Brown. Brown coaching search. And I stopped. <laughs> I thought we were just saying Fran Brown. I, I, I felt I felt like like when you do a one, two, three, like that's only I feel like fun right. when you do like a one or two word thing. I think it's funnier the longer it goes. All right, let's try Ready? it. Ready? Right. Three, two, one. Fran, Fran Brown, Brown coaching, coaching search, search and, and hiring, hiring Camden. Camden. <laughs> Forgot about the Camden thing. Oh, sorry, I didn't even realize I put that on the list. That was my own brain. <laughs> Wait, even that. He's like, one, two, three, you would be Fran Brown. <laughs> Well, I kind of, I kind of liked leaving Tommy hanging there and letting him just rip because I had him on camera and you could see like this like panic in his eyes. Oh, I was, I was loving every minute of it. But yeah, Fran Brown, what, what is, why is he your number one? Hit me with your, hit me with it. How could he not be? Yeah. Come on, there is nothing else that happened here that was a bigger deal than that. I don't, I don't think. I think just again from the um, amount of community response, from the way that it transformed the program, from the fact that you're seeing lifers, all timers, like the fans who have have truly been invested for 50, 60 plus years, being like, this is the most excited I have ever felt. Putting him at one was me betting on his potential from seeing all of the things that I've already seen over the past five months, which is crazy because we haven't even seen him play one real game, right? Like I am understanding and okay with the fact that this could still be, I don't know, a seven win or an eight win season, but I don't think so. I really don't. Like to me, it's giving 10 win season. Like I think, I, and I, I said that a few weeks ago, I still believe that now. Like I just have so much excitement and hope with the college football playoff expanding. Everybody was roasting me for that. I don't care. I'm not saying that that's going to happen this year, but I think that this is a team that with Fran Brown and the amount of recruits that are just filtering in, um, that you're going to be seeing some things that, that you haven't seen here probably ever. 
Yeah, I agree. I'm less concerned about wins and losses. I am concerned about wins and losses, but I'm less concerned about that and the numbers on a paper than I am just the complete revitalization that he gave to Syracuse football. I mean, this is – Syracuse, I guess, was not a football school for so long, did not have the football culture that some other schools have. And to see that really come around now, I'm so excited for this fall to see how fans respond to that. Um and I, I just I think it's going to be great. I think not only football, but also just the Syracuse athletics, just the the um, accountability piece that he's bringing, dart, detail, all of that stuff that that's around this school and this athletic program is so fantastic. He provided us so many great moments this winter off the field. Just wait until we see what he does on the field. Um. I think what stuck out to me was even like what Sam just said. I think she summed it up in a one-liner. Me putting it, him at one is betting on his potential. Like that's what all of this is. Like we've seen what we've seen from him. All of it's been great outside of the football, outside of the sports, outside of the athletics. Him investing in the community, him caring, him being there, being present in ways that we have not seen from any previous football coach at Syracuse. I think that the sky is kind of the limit to see what happens here. And as long as the community stays behind him and he continues to invest in it, I think he will make the most of his time here and as will the football team as they play. For me, this came at the perfect time because Syracuse was one of many schools that found themselves in this situation of college football is king. Mm -hmm. Can we lift ourselves up to be a part of where this is heading? Because we don't fully know just yet. But it's huge in the future of people's athletic departments and their success. So much of it is going to come down to football. And I think Syracuse had a home run with this hire and everything we've seen so far. He's so different. There's nothing that compares that I can ever think of in a way that this man has created an impact on a fan base having not even played a game. He was genuine from day one. It was true authenticity that this fan base, whether they realized it or not, they were craving that. And he just seems, and, and, he's, and, he's, and he's backed up every word he's stated so far in, t in terms of connecting with the community. And end of the day, I think he's, he's the guy. He's the guy. And just to go off of that, not even just in Syracuse, but in the whole Northeast, right? We're all from the Northeast. Um, and, and football really here is not the same. College football is not the same standard as it is in a lot of other parts of the country. It's just not king here like it is in some other spots. So to see Syracuse have the potential to take over that spot. And wear a crown. Yeah, and wear a crown in the Northeast is, is so great. And um, just our experience that Tommy and I got to go down to Camden and to talk to people from his past was made such a huge impact on me too to see how kids in New Jersey and kids in Philadelphia and et cetera um, are, are looking towards that future it was really great. Okay, excellent. And those videos, we I just realized we, we've never dropped them on YouTube. So Ashley and I yeah. did some feature stories on, on Fran Brown, who is he, what made him, as well as the South Jersey connections, this pipeline that we're seeing. So those will probably be dropping next week. We're figuring that out, trying to have on a big guest, hopefully – in the next few weeks that, that we've talked about on this list. So that's a teaser that I'm pretty confident in. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. So keep an eye out and, and you'll recognize them. Final thoughts. Um, final thoughts. Um, I guess, I don't know. I actually don't know if I have any final thoughts. Could someone else go first and sure. it will generate something for me? Um, I think you could sum up the whole <laughs> year for Syracuse athletics in one word, and it would be transformative mm. in every sport. This was a transformative year in football at the, at the end of the year, right when the actual football playing was done. Uh, it was a transformative year in, in basketball, Adrian Autry's first season. You know, lacrosse, Gary Gate gets to the tournament for the first time. So all across the board, women's basketball, just every sport, I feel like, really had a new storyline this year and a new kind of rebirth and revitalization in some way, shape, or form. It didn't always go completely seamlessly. There were bumps in the road for a lot of, a lot of the new head coaches and a lot of the sports. But it's definitely a new era in Syracuse athletics, not just in football, in every sport. Transformative. I think she nailed it. Yep. Ditto. I'm <laughs> Mike done. Mic drop on that. Mic drop. All right. Sink a shot and then we're out of here, Sam. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hold not the hand. Hit, hit one. Come on. We're, we're, not, we're not leaving until you hit it. That's going to be our Don't new show. Don't make me in. come over there, Sam. <laughs> Sam, your face. You look like you're going to cry. <laughs> what is going on here? 
This is a D1 athlete. Allegedly. Lock in. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Are you going hole? She wants she wants she wants she wants airmail. Maybe D1 cornhole should be a thing. <laughs> it's coming eventually. Probably. Come on, Sam. Three more, then we're out of here. I'm shutting this down no matter what. Sam is hot in here. <laughs> Come on. That's a two-bagger. We're out. <laughs> Sam Cross and Ashley Winskowski, Rachel Culver. I'm Tommy Slade. Thanks for enjoying our 10 moments, and we will be back for more summertime. Let's go.